I want to be careful if you're looking for a match online. A new report finds some dating apps are actually sharing information about you with other companies. But experts say there are steps that you can take to protect your personal data. Consumer expert Amy Davis shows us how. If you're searching for your Valentine online, beware. A report last month found several dating apps are sharing details about your sexuality, religion, and location. Advocacy group Norwegian Consumer Council looked at 10 apps and found that OkCupid, Tinder, and others collectively shared consumers' data with at least 135 companies. Data is the new oil, okay? That's where everybody's making their money. And we're giving up so much. In a statement to media outlets, the Match Group, which owns OkCupid and Tinder, said it complies with privacy laws and shares only specific user data deemed necessary. Cyber experts say it is impossible to determine where all that data really ends up. And they recommend you look very closely at any app's privacy consent before you agree to the terms. Try to read the agreement as much as possible, but don't just jump and go, you know, oh, it's okay, I'm safe. No, you're not. Experts say until federal regulators take action, protecting your privacy is all up to you. We need to start asking more questions. What is being used? You know, how is our data being used? Why? How are you profiting from my data? Amy Davis, KPRC, Channel 2 News. Yeah, you know, so you ha tomorrow's the big day, and so if you just start your search now, um, you know, you, you really want to get on it. Yes, for sure. have, have a good conversation <laughs> first, see how it goes. Yeah, we're not dating experts though, so. Yeah, of course, no. Yeah, well, you know, I mean, I've been at it for like you know twenty something <laughs> years, so you know, I, I got a few tips. With four daughters, yeah, yes. I think so. <laughs> All right, thanks so much for joining us here at the News at Four. Channel Two News at Five begins in sixty seconds. Don't go away. Three six nine eight. Live from KPRC, this is Channel 2 News at 5. I ask, is it cheating? Excuse me? Do you use the word cheating? Was this cheating? Yes, we made a mistake. We, you know, we, we did what we did. But that doesn't make us a bad person. But it, was, it was definitely wrong. It was definitely wrong, and we should have stopped it at the time. You know, we, we crossed a boundary. I think, you know, we broke the rules, and we're sorry. Justin, do you use the word cheating? Was this cheating? The unusual excitement and energy that goes along with spring training was replaced with remorse and regret. The Houston Astros today apologizing for the sign-stealing scandal as the team seeks to regain the trust of the fans and the city of Houston. Good evening, I'm Lauren Freeman. I'm Keith Garvin. The team is addressing the cheating accusations for the first time together as spring training gets underway in Florida. And the team is repeatedly saying two things. That they're sorry and what they did was wrong. We have live team coverage tonight. Ari Alexander is covering reaction from around the league and around the country where not everyone is as forgiving. But we want to begin with sports director Randy McElvoy live from West Palm Beach where team owner Jim Crane addressed whether or not he considers the scandal cheating. Randy. Yeah, that was one hot topic coming out of that news conference this morning, guys. It was a media frenzy here in West Palm Beach, Florida. Day one of spring training for the Astros. All of us joined uh, by the national outlets, of course, that made their way here to town. All of us wanting clarity and, frankly, wanting to hear the players speak for the first time on this subject. They've been silent now for well over a month. While this controversy will continue for a while, well into this regular season here coming up in a couple of months, today was a big step for the Astros, not only as a team, but also as an organization. On this opening day of spring training, before any ball was thrown, the Astros faced a large media contingent wanting answers. Owner Jim Crane spoke first and was asked, was this cheating? We broke the rules, and you can phrase that any way you want. The Astros as a team had been silent on the scandal, failing to directly address the topic until today. Alex Bregman and Jose Altuve represented the team. I am really sorry about the choices that were made by my team, by the organization, and by me. We especially feel remorse for the impact in our fans and the gain of baseball. The Astros, according to MLB's report, clearly embraced the illegal sign-stealing methods often in parts of 2017 and into 2018. Inside the clubhouse, Bregman, Altuve, and other teammates met with the media to field questions. With a team as talented as the Astros, why did they do it? I don't, I don't think it was necessary. We were like, like you said, we were, we were a good, we were a good baseball team. We still are to this day, and it's just one of those thing, unfortunate things where, you know, 
we, we didn't make the best judgment call. And what lesson has been learned as they now try to repair their tarnished image in the game? Well, somewhere we want to be uh, coming into this season. Um, we got to take responsibility for our actions. All right, those comments from the Astros that tell you it's inside the clubhouse to a man. The Astros realize the mistakes they made actually could have been stopped. A.J. Hinch uh, took precautions to try to make that happen. They ignored those moves by A.J. Hinch when he tried to damage the monitors. It could have been stopped right then. The players say they're not going to go down this path again, despite the fact that they believe illegal sign stealing is prevalent in the game of baseball. But right now, the Astros, of course, have been singled out. We've got much more coming up at 6 o'clock, more reaction. And of course, a lot of coverage from today's events here in West Palm Beach. You can find it on click2houston.com. Live in West Palm Beach with the Astros, Randy McAvoy, KPRC Channel 2 Sports. All right, Randy, thank you. And in click2houston.com, we've been asking if you think the Astros helped or hurt themselves today with the apology. The majority of you say hurt at 63%. Either way. Thank you for voting. You know, today's Astros apology not being well received nationwide as it is here in Houston. Ari Alexander continues our team coverage now with those who say the apology is just an act. Ari. Yeah, for Astros fans, you might want to stay in an Astro fan bubble because outside of it, frankly, it's not good. After today's apologies, the reaction around Major League Baseball and around the nation is not forgiveness. It's hate. The rest of baseball hates the Astros. This isn't just Yankees fans or Dodgers fans. There are players from a handful of teams criticizing both the act of sign stealing itself and the apology. Here's athletics pitcher Sean Manaya today criticizing the Astros apology. He said in part, quote, they skated by everything. They swept everything under the rug. They didn't own up to anything and they're trying to move on, which is like, what are you guys trying to move on from? You haven't even said what you did. Then there's Nationals reliever Sean Doolittle who said in part, quote, this is going to be something that they're going to have to work really hard at to show baseball players and fans that they're remorseful. Being sorry you got caught and being sorry for what you did are two different things. And there's KTLA in Los Angeles taking shots. This is a screenshot from a newscast earlier today. It's a sound bite from Houston's favorite diminutive player, Jose Altuve. It doesn't say Astros second baseman, Jose Altuve. It says Astros cheater. The guy who gave up one of Jose Altuve's most famous home runs, Yankees fireballer Aroldis Chapman, spoke today, and he disputed Jim Crane's comments that the sign stealing didn't impact the game. I disagree with that. You know, uh, when you know the signs that you know is coming, especially in, at this level of, of baseball, you know, we have uh, some of the most talented baseball players in the world. You know, and uh, as hitters, if they have a, a, an edge and advantage knowing what's coming, it's just going to make them stronger. And Aroldis Chapman was not the only comment from the Yankees. Manager Aaron Boone said, quote, that's a stretch and respond to Crane. Of course, all spring training players and executives likely to show their distaste for the Astros. We're going to keep you updated all of that when it happens. Guys. Back to you. All right, Ari, and our coverage just getting started on Click2Houston.com and the Click2Houston News app. We have the entire press conference with the reaction from players. We also have so many more tweets from people who are just not having it with this team apology. And our live coverage from West Palm Beach continues tonight on Channel 2 News at 6. There are new developments tonight surrounding the painstaking review into thousands of cases involving former HPD officer Gerald Goins. He's one of two officers charged in connection with a deadly botched police raid. And now a man who was convicted of drug charges in one of the officer's cases may be declared innocent. He is the second person to get a reversal. Senior reporter Phil Archer is live downtown with more on the story for us. Phil. A district judge said today she will recommend that man be declared innocent after seeing evidence that he was convicted on false testimony, both the judge and prosecutors calling it a miscarriage of justice. Judge Kelly Johnson joined with prosecutors today to recommend that Stephen Mallett's drug conviction be thrown out, calling it a miscarriage of justice. This appears so egregious on his face. Uh, it's a miscarriage of justice, and most of all, I think it causes a breakdown in the confidence in our American justice system. Mallett and his brother Otis were arrested in 2008 by former HPD narcotics officer Gerald Goins. They were convicted largely on Goins' testimony, but prosecutors now say Goins lied on the witness stand. And the only witness that claimed he saw each individual commit the crime was Goins. Mallett said little as he left the courtroom today. Oh, just very glad it's over with, that's all. 
Malice's brother Otis served two years in prison for intent to deliver cocaine. He was declared innocent in an earlier hearing. Stephen Mallet served 10 months in state jail after falsely confessing to the crime. He pled guilty because he had been in jail for 10 months and they were offering him a deal basically for time served. They said you can get out if you plead guilty, so he pled guilty. Last year, Goins was charged with murder and federal civil rights violations after leading the Harding Street drug raid that left two homeowners dead and five officers injured. Now prosecutors are reviewing 441 cases filed by Goins that led to 263 convictions involving 234 defendants. The Mallet brothers' cases now go to the Texas Court of Criminal Appeals, which will make the final determination on their guilt or innocence. Reporting live downtown, I'm Phil Archer, KPRC Channel 2 News. Thank you, Phil. Now to Decision 2020 coverage tonight and right here in Houston. It is the first day of the ground game in the race for president. Democratic candidate Michael Bloomberg is making a couple of stops in the Bayou City tonight as Senator Bernie Sanders and philanthropist Tom Steyer are also looking to gain a foothold in our city. Channel 2 reporter Marion Martinez is live now in East Houston where the Sanders campaign is about to open their first Houston office. Marianne. Hello, that opening is scheduled for 6.30 today. Now, the Vermont senator is not actually here. That's just a cutout, but he will be in Dallas for a rally tomorrow. As Texans head to the polls on March 3rd, candidates running for president are competing for Texas votes. Bernie Sanders, known for his promise to reverse economic inequality, is currently the Democratic front frontrunner. Billionaire business businessman Tom Steyer also opened his Houston campaign office today in the second ward. The California Progressive has called for term limits on Congress, limiting the influence of corporations in politics and addressing climate change. He's also spent millions of his own dollars running ads to impeach President Trump and now millions more running for president. When people come inside, they're going to be able to be greeted by different speakers we have from across the city talking about what matters to everyday Houstonians. This campaign is about listening to Houstonians, not telling them what they need to hear. Now, again, the opening here is at 6.30. Now, former mayor of New York and billionaire Michael Bloomberg is in Houston today. He has two events and also just received the endorsement of Mayor Sylvester Turner. Of course, we will be at those two events and bring you the latest and the wrap-up of, of all the day's events tonight at 10. Reporting live from the east side, Marianne Martinez, KPRC, Channel 2 News. All right, Marianne, thank you. A live look outside tonight, and the blue skies and sunshine have made a triumphant comeback here in Houston. Yes, it's still chilly out there though Frank is here with a look yep. at how tonight's gonna shape up you know it's a little breezy too which those will calm down as we get into this evening highs this afternoon made it to 60 degrees to push in our continental 59 at Hobby 56 in Galveston all in all though to see that sunshine it was pleasant right now we're in the 50s low 50s Huntsville 58 in Houston 56 on the island 55 down in Wharton 52 in Columbus this evening 52 at 7 48 at 9 and 45 at 11 so it's gonna be on the cool side a cuddle alert for tomorrow morning but it's Valentine's morning, right? 36, 37, 38 at Bush, 42 downtown. It's going to be chilly, 45 down in Galveston and High Island. So get ready for that. You'll love the rest of Valentine's Day's forecast. I'll have that straight ahead, your Mardi Gras parade cast and next week's umbrella timeline straight ahead in weather. Keith. All right, Frank, thank you. Coming up, an incredible mission underway as a church that was in dire need of a miracle now getting the help they so desperately needed. Bill Spencer live with an unforgettable case of Spencer Salt. But first, here's a look at what's coming up on Nightly News. Lauren and Keith tonight on NBC News Investigation, a look into mounting consumer complaints against a popular teeth straightening company, what Smile Direct Club is telling us. Also, the video reigniting the debate over airline etiquette, to recline or not to recline, on NBC Nightly News after Channel 2 News at 5. Three repairs. We have a very special case of Spencer Solves It tonight. The prayers of a church in Liberty County have been answered, and it's all thanks to the incredible men and women who make up Bill's Brigade. Channel 2's Bill Spencer has been at the church in Tarkington Prairie since the wee hours of the morning. He's live now to show us the progress there. Bill? <laughs> Yeah, we've been here since 5 o'clock this morning. The hard-working crew here at Lesman roofing and sheet metal, uh, cutting up all of the materials to go on to this brand-new roof. Everybody pitching in today. I want you to see this machine because it's really something. These are 2,000-pound re 
wheels, uh, coils of raw sheet metal. They go through this machine and then they're spit out this other end right here, perfectly formed into the panels that will make up what will become this brand new roof. And take a look at how the roof is shaping up. We are nearly complete with the job right now. Gene Lesman is the president of Lesman Roofing and Sheet Metal. Gene, you are doing an incredible thing here. This is a $20,000 job. Yes, sir. You're doing it absolutely free. Why did you want to help? Well, I'd like to help you out because you do a good job at what you do. <laughs> and after I met these people, these are wonderful people, and I'll help these type of people anytime. A, in, in, with the economy doing good and, and our president doing a good job, <laughs> I want to help everybody I can. God bless you, man. You're a wonderful guy. He's my brother. He's my brother. I want to talk to a couple of the church members, and especially I want to start out with Jerry. What do you think about what you've seen all day? These guys working so hard doing all this work. Just amazing at the, the work that these guys do. I mean, it's just they know their stuff. Nobody has to ask a question. They jump up. They do it. They know what if the other guy needs to do. Yep. And, I mean, it's just it looks good, phenomenal. It? It, it looks good. beautiful, yes. What are you feeling? What's going through your heart? Quickly do it. That we're just very, very blessed that our prayers are being answered and that between you and Channel 2 and Mr. Lessman, we have a roof that we can continue to worship under. Fantastic. Fantastic. That's right. Prayers answered. Uh, and that roof will be done very shortly in, next, in the next few hours. Reporting live in uh, Tarkington Prairie is where we are. Reporting live, this is Bill Spencer. <laughs> Spencer Sauls at KPRC Channel 2 News. Right. Amazing job mm -hmm. there, Bill. Great Amazing job out room. there, Bill. No, they're That's happy. Right. Yes. That's yes, nice. looking good. Okay, this picture, I can't tell if it's real or a painting. I think I'm just going to tell you well, that. Well, John sends a lot of pictures in. A lot of blue in there. The Kingwood area. It almost looks like a heart for Valentine's Day. Oh, my, it does. And I've seen some cloud pictures that are oh. Photoshopped that are like right. definitely look like a heart. Yeah. Uh, John sends the real deal. We know it's not Photoshopped. So this it looks like a painting to me. Looks, looks yeah. kind of... Yeah. Well, maybe a little filtered, but yeah. You know, get, get pretty. Uh, getting us in the mood. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> there you go. Hey, we saw some blue sky. Look at that. Triangle Energy Camera of downtown. Absolutely beautiful. 58 and north wind at 10. Humidity continues to come down. That dew point's way down there in the 30s. We have a large separation before the, between the temperature and the dew point. That That is the way you know it's really dry out there. There's somebody walking on the beach. 56. 43 the dew point north winds at 13 in Galveston. If you're headed that way for Mardi Gras, Saturday, Sunday, both look pretty good. There's 30% chances early, early in the morning, like overnight Saturday into early Sunday. The funky uptown umbrella brigade is Friday night. The zany golf cart, the Aquarius parades, Gambrinus parades Saturday night, the Fiesta Gras parades are on Sunday, and a whole lot more. And of course, lots of concerts. So have a good time. Be careful. Temperatures in the 50s right now 51, 4, 58, 59 in Pearland, 56 on the island. Humidity continues to come down 40, 50 percent with those temperatures is not bad at all. The winds are fairly stout, 10, 12, 14 miles an hour, and even some gusts still, 19, 20 miles an hour out there. They'll start to die down once the sun goes down, but generally this is the forecast for winds and overnight right there in the 7 to 10 mile an hour range. The good news is that should keep us from freezing, maybe way to the north up around, uh, say, Crockett or Center or Buffalo. You might see some freezing numbers, 36, 37, 38 for Bush, 42 downtown, but certainly a cold old one to wake up to and highs tomorrow. 58, 59, maybe to 60 like today, but it's going to be hard to get there. At lunch, I'm looking at 54 for your love brunch, 56 for your flower stop because you forgot the flowers. Dinner for two, 53 at 748 at 10 o'clock. There's the drought monitor that came out today. We need some rain around here. And even despite what we got already, we didn't get a lot of rain this week. It was just dreary. We're still in that abnormally to a moderate uh, range for drought and even severe out to the west. Those red areas are extreme down in the valley. So the chances are coming but not this weekend. High pressure is in control. It'll bring in, I think, fog on Sunday morning. Maybe there's that there's that Galveston chance for a quick shower, but that's it. I think more than anything, a little fog. And the same for Monday. Once we get to Tuesday, this front comes in. That gives us at least a better chance for rain, and that goes way up on Wednesday. We put the cool air in place and then pull some Pacific moisture on top of it. It's more drizzleable than anything else, but it could bring us a few showers. The power planter tonight has no rain in it at all. You can see clear sky, temperatures through the 40s for the most part.
part. We'll get there pretty quickly once the sun goes down. Pretty perfect for your hair cast. Numbers for Friday. Did I say Friday? 38 and 58. 66 on Saturday, 72 Sunday, and then we're at 76. So a nice warming trend into President's Day and Tuesday. There's the front for Wednesday. 40% chance of rain. Then we cool back down. Second weekend of Mardi Gras right now is looking pretty good. The Momus Parade on Saturday night. Next weekend, we're going to be live down there. That's right. We'll be right here on Channel 2 from 6.30 to 8 o'clock. Yeah, that's going to be fun. Yep. Yes, it will. Yes, right. it will. I mean, yeah, it will. Enjoy. It will. We guarantee it's going to we'll be We'll be fun. watching. Yes. And, and clear skies. Yes. That's right. <laughs> Thanks, Frank. Right now, here's Channel 2 investigator Joel Eisenbaum with a story you'll see all new tonight at 10. Even just the water, that's power driven. Boy, everything runs on electricity. And a cyber attack? A cyber attack against the power grid would shut down life as we know it. We would want to check on nursing homes, hospitals, uh, more challenging those people in the community who rely on medical equipment that needs to have power. We're looking at who's doing what to prevent an attack. We continually invest in trained resources and staff to make sure that we keep our electric grid safe. Cyber criminals aren't just stealing our passwords, they're aiming much higher. Can we protect our power grids from hackers? Tonight at 10. It is official. Five Randall's locations across the Houston area are closing their doors for good this week. The affected stores include one in the Woodlands, one in Spring, two in Kingwood, and one down south in Clear Lake. The stores are shutting down this Saturday, leaving just 13 locations across the area. The company blames it on a very competitive cutthroat grocery market. Just last year, Randall's closed seven stores across Houston. In College Station, the Fort Chaplin's Memorial Foundation is recognizing those who served our communities or the nation. Jim McInvale, or Mattress Mac, awarded the Legion of Honor Gold Medallion posthumously to President George H.W. Bush and Barbara Bush. Their grandson, George P. Bush, accepted the award on their behalf. The Gold Medallion is the most prestigious award presented by the organization. The Charles W. David Life Saving Medallion went to two officers from the Santa Fe ISD Police Department. Officer John Barnes and Assistant Chief Gray Forward, Gary Forward rather, uh, worked to stop the gunman who opened fire at Santa Fe High School. Well deserved. Yes. We'll be right back. Good evening, I'm Dominique Soxa in the newsroom with what we're working on for Channel 2 News at 6 o'clock. More on the Astros player apologies, how the sign-stealing scandal has impacted the city of Houston and its image, and a massive art collection stashed in a county maintenance shed, taxpayers picking up the stat tab for storage. Channel 2 investigator Mario Diaz broke this story last night at 10 o'clock. Tonight, he's looking at another man connected to the art. And only on two, a dentist office closes its doors with no warning, leaving patients asking, what now? These stories and more at the top of the hour on Channel 2 News at 6. Back to you. All right, Dominique, thank you. Mm -hmm. We're following some breaking news. We want to bring you now near Jersey Village. That's where a 15-year-old riding a bike has been hit by a vehicle. It happened along Philippine Street. The teenager had to be flown to a hospital by life flight. We're still trying to get more information on the condition of that person and what led to the crash. All right, we'll have the sun out there a little bit longer. Yeah, sun's out there for sure if you're headed out. 52 at 7, 49 at 8, and then 48 at 9. It's going to be a chilly one overnight. I'll have an update at 6. Okay. Sounds All good. Right. All right, and we'll see you at 6 o'clock.